Hello, my name is John King. And over this past summer, I've been doing research with Dr. Greg Howland on imaging with optical phase arrays and integrated photonic circuits. So what is an integrated photonic circuit? Well, an integrated photonic circuit is pretty much just a very, very small chip that uses light instead of electricity and wires instead of waveguides. So instead of having electricity be carried around the chip by wires to various components, the light is sent into a waveguide and the waveguide will carry the light all over the chip to various components. And one of those components that I've been doing a lot of research into over the summer is an optical phase array. And the basis of an optical phase array is a diffraction grating. So a diffraction grating is pretty much just a series of small gaps in a material that let the light out, or in this case, change the direction the light is going. So the light will enter into a diffraction grating, hit the grating, and then be steered. In the case of the diffraction grating that I designed over the summer, the light gets shot straight up out of the diffraction grating and all gets directed towards a small point of light very far away from the diffraction grating. And an optical phased array is pretty much just a grid of diffraction gratings. If you look at the image to the right, you can see it is a four by four grid of diffraction gratings. And an optical phase array actually works kind of similar to a diffraction grating because the light comes out of each of those diffraction gratings within the optical phase array, comes straight up out of the optical phase array, and the light will interfere and interact with each other in such a way that the light ends up all being sent into one direction towards a very small point of light, similar to how a diffraction grating does it. It's just in the case of an optical phase array, it ends up being a bit more precise and you can actually steer the light that comes out of an optical phased array using various techniques I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and in certain situations, an optical phased array, instead of being used to send light out, it'll be used to absorb light. It ends up being the exact same thing, except instead of having light be sent out of the chip and looking and being sent to a certain point, the optical phased array will just look at a certain point and then absorb light from that specific point and you can steer that point in the exact same way you might steer a beam coming out of the optical phase array. And if you have an absorbed light instead of emitting light, it can be used uh, for very small scale lensless imaging. So the overall project started with me designing a diffraction grating to be used as one tile in an optical phase array. And then once I designed that optical that diffraction grating, I uploaded the data to Python and then once it was all in Python, I wrote some code to tile out that diffraction grading and you know, do various other things to the data to create and simulate various optical phase arrays within Python. At the bottom there, these are just three different optical phase arrays I made. One is four by four, then five by five and six by six. I designed, I designed many more with various sizes and shapes, but those are just three examples. So a very important thing to be aware of in an optical phase array is the phase of the light that you put into the optical phase array. And the phase is effectively the position of the light. And in the case of an optical phase array, it's similar to intensity. So in the top right corner, there is an image of an optical phase array that I created. And the first column has a phase of zero and the final column has a phase of pi. And so it's just that the total phase shift of the arrays, the first is zero, the last one's pi. And by changing the phase array, the phase of the array, you can effectively steer the light. And that's what happens, is what hap is happening at the bottom image there. You can see that yellow point moving across the black, the black screen. And that is the light being steered in the optical phase array. And that is the exact, that is, if, if light were coming out of it, but if you were to try and look at a certain point, it's the exact same thing. That bright yellow mark marks where the optical phase array is looking. And one interesting thing with phase is that it, it can only range from zero to two pi. Once you pass two pi phase, it ends up resetting back to zero, which can be seen, uh, which I'll talk more about later. And another important thing with understanding how the optical phase array work, works is the far field. So the far field is pretty much just a sheet or a screen that is very, very far away from the optical phase array and shows where it's looking. 
So if you look at this image here to the right, the bit at the bottom is an optical phased array. And then the first column of the optical phased array has a phase of zero and the last column has a phase of zero. And so do all the columns in between. And that just causes the optical phase array to look straight up. It doesn't shift, doesn't move, it just looks straight up. And it's looking at that red semicircle there out of the far field. But then the image to the right, the first column of the phased array has a phase of zero and the last column has a phase of two pi. And this effectively causes the light coming out of the far end of the phase array to shift upwards, which results in an, a, a shift, an angling of the light coming out of the phased array. And there's no actual mechanic components that angle anything. It's just the fact that the, the way the phase of the light works is if you have some phase change from the first column to the last column, it will cause an angle in the way the light is exiting the phase array. And then this will cause some shift, some linear shift in the far field, which is demonstrated by the movement of that red semicircle from the center to the side a little bit. So in designing the optical phase arrays, I had to think about all of these various components. And I wanted to change various dimensions and the phases of the optical phase array to try my best to optimize the far field movement. And the dimensions I changed were really just how many optical phase arrays made up the grid, whether it was five by five, seven by seven, or three by three. And I, it turns out that the size of the grid doesn't actually have that big of an impact on the position of the point of where the optical phase array is looking in the far field. It makes the point a bit more tiny, but otherwise it doesn't change really anything about the position of the point. And the other major thing I was looking at is the phase shifts from one column, the first column of the optical phase array to the last column. And if you look at this graph here to the right, the maximum phase is on the x-axis and then the position of the of where the optical phase array is looking is on the y-axis. And what the maximum phase is, is it's just the difference between the phase of the first column and the last column. So at the beginning, there's zero difference between the first and last column, and they move forward a little bit, and then there's 3.14, which is pi phase difference between the first and last column, and it keeps going. And what's neat is if you notice, it keeps jumping. It slowly climbs up and then drops, and then slowly climbs up and then drops. And what that dropping is, is that's once you reach some phase shift of two pi, it ends up resetting back to zero and then climbs up to a new phase shift of two pi and then drops back down to zero. And the and this is only changing the position. So there's some maximum shift you can get in the far field that corresponds, some linear shift in the far field that corresponds to a two pi phase shift on the optical phase array. And what this resulted in is uh, it, my program, I ended up writing a program that was able to create and simulate an optical phased array of any dimensions. And I could steer the where the optical phased array was looking in the far field any way I wanted. And that image there to the side shows you just a very simple shift to the side. And that is happening because I'm changing the phase shift within the optical phased array. And I learned how to optimize that movement and make it as and move as as I wanted it to. So the next steps for a project like this would be to add a second optical phase array. And if you look at this image here to the side, those red rectangles show where the optical phase arrays are located. And then there is a gap between the two optical phase arrays of about 20 microns. And by adding that second optical phase array, you now have two beams shooting upwards, and then those two beams will interact with each other, or the light coming into the optical, each of those phase arrays will, will interact with each other. And this causes a, an even more precise point. It allows you to look at a much more precise point using the optical phase array. And by adding two of them, you can get very precise uh, lensless imaging on a very, very small scale. So thank you very much for watching. And I'd like to thank Dr. Howland for helping me through this project over the summer.